Um, I'm not saying I brought on a lot to TAT, but I did bring on a substantial amount. Back, back then, TAT was essentially a magazine and a database of repairs and fixes. Um, I might just leave that there, I think. I could just. Um, so there was other things to it. But so um, one of the great things about TAT is we have this um, repair solutions technical assistance. Oops, yep. I think I missed that. So technical assistance is, is, is um, we, usually, we usually submit about 20 a week on average. We're roughly 20 new submissions every week. So, you know, you might have a, a difficult vehicle in, in your workshop today and you, you, you submit, a, fill out the form, what sort of vehicle it is, what the complaint is, what repairs you've tried, where you're at so far in the process okay, of, yeah. of the diagnostic job. And um, then it goes out to our, we've got 10 guys that are all workshop owners and they um, are there, they get the message straight away that Joe Blow's just submitted a, a, a technical assistance request. We log into it and we read what the problem is and we give our advice. We help them through the, okay. through the diagnostic process. Once that has been solved and the, and, the, and the workshop has fixed the problem, we then close that and then we turn that into a repair solution, which is in our database that can be searched. So this database of, of of problem vehicles that have been fixed is just growing all the time. And it's, we've got a phenomenal search engine that searches the entire website. So, you know, you might punch in, um, I don't know how familiar you guys might be with the Mazda P2096, which we see a fair bit of, catalyst back O2 sensor efficiency catalyst problem. Efficiency. And people throw cats and oxygen sensors yeah. and all sorts of stuff at it. You know, that's a good example. Like if I punched in that into our main search engine, there would be, we'd, we'd get back a couple of magazine articles on the subject. We'd get back um, process videos showing the process of actually programming. So if you've never programmed before, there's videos on there that'll show you how to program that software update. Um, and it'll show you the technical Okay, can you just fixes. explain, like you said you do some programming. So you're talking about a Mazda 3? Yes. Um, so you can you can um, do a software upgrade on that? Oh, yeah, my word. Yeah. My word. And we've got... Um, well, can you just sort of explain just briefly? In the what, database here, we've got technical... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, mate. I'll because, just, well, hands up here, what do we do? We farm it out? Well... We don't do it ourselves, do we? So if I just go here, we've got... Um, so a Mazda 3? I mean, I so, get Matt so, Hardy, but the problem is I find Matt Hardy charges $200. I won't play at all, but there it is there. So this is Gil Sher, one of our technical team, and it shows you how to update the Mazda PCM software to fix the 2096. So that'll take you through the whole process from start to finish. And what scan tools are you using? Uh, do you want to see the plane? Um, so we can, you can use the Mazda. The Mazda tool is uh, it's, it's the same as the Ford tool. It's a VCM, and we use a yeah. program called IDS. Um, that's the IDS software. But you don't need to have the Mazda tool. You can use a pass-through tool, a JBox. You guys familiar with JBoxes? J2534? Yeah. yeah. So that's a universal tool um, that was originally made by, for the US to address emission control problems only on engine control modules. But as time has evolved, as time's gone, it's evolved, and now they have different revisions of that J2534. So now you can not only pro program engine control modules, but you can do body and chassis control modules as well. So the J2534 is, uh, or JBox is a fabulous tool because it gives you the ability to do programming on, on all manner of makes without having to buy all those factory tools. Okay. You know, like if you don't want to buy the Tech 2 for the Holden, you don't want to buy the IDS for the, or the VCM for the Ford, and, the v, and then another VCM for the Mazda, right. and you know, all those, you can just use a universal tool that you can buy from Mount Auto Equip or so any of those places. I'll just turn this off. With this, I'm just a little bit confused, but I've always been interested. I've always wanted to do my own programming. Where do you get the software from, like, to do the upgrade? Off the service portals. Off so, the service portals. So, so on our site, we have, our, in our resources section, we have our aftermarket information resource. I think this some links. So this is really interesting. So here's our, this is something I've compiled to help guys learn how to access um, factory information. Because, you know, Nigel's working hard to make this available to us through the choice of repairer. So here it is. So as manufacturers are coming around and making this information available to us, we're compiling it on one page, so you've only got to go one place to find this information. So, so you might have a you know, might have a, a VZ Commodore with a no start fuel gauge error problem that probably everybody in here has seen. So you can just quickly go to the Holden site, Holden link, 
It shows you how to get to the, that first button. Shows you how to get to the service portal for, for GMH. You can, it, the next section down explains the process of a subscription, how much it costs for subscription. You can click that button just there, subscription information. That'll take you to the page to sign up. You put in your business name and details, ABN and all that, and you're straight away signed up. You pay for a short-term subscription of 20 bucks, and then you punch in the VIN number of the vehicle. You connect your J2534 tool to the DLC and to your laptop downloads the file to your laptop, and then over to the control module, updates the software. Okay. So anyone here do that? Yeah, I've done it with Tech2. Yep. Yeah, well, when you're doing the Silverados and that. You were looking for it, sir? Yesterday. <laughs> but that's interesting, yeah, missed, isn't it? Missed by one day. Have we learned something today? <laughs> I friggin' I have learned something today. So there you go. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm quite proud of the way the website has come has evolved. It has, since. it um, certainly has. So like, I'm not trying to sound like a smart ass, but I brought a lot of this stuff on board. So when Tat and I first met, so as I said, I, I, I found out about Tat through through Auto Nerds. So I just joined as a typical member. I was just, just one of the other members on there. And I still had scandata.com.au running on the side that I was maintaining and adding new features to it all the time. And so we had Tat over here and Scandata over here and within a few months um, of me joining uh, uh, TAT, I discovered all of the technical team of TAT became members of Scandata. Right? <laughs> so they saw value in it, which is great. I yeah. was quite proud of that. Yeah. Um, and I, th I still, to this day, think having a database of known good Scandata is a, is a wonderful tool. Um, so it, was, it, seemed, it seemed funny that we had these two great resources, but they were apart, apart. from one another. And I, I spoke to Morris. It's always Morris. Morris is a troublemaker. He instigates everything, Morris. Yeah. Um, so Mor Morris mentioned something to Jeff about me. And then Jeff contacted Jeff me. Jeff Mutton, that is? No, Jeff Smith. Jeff, Jeff Smith. Smith was the creator of TAD. Okay. Um, there was originally four directors. One of them left early. And uh, a new director came on uh, who was an, the editor. He became the editor of the magazine and a director. So there was four again. And just as I came on as a new director when I came on with this, uh, the editor retired. You know, Ken Newton, his name was. He was getting on. It was time for him to start thinking about fishing and relaxing and stuff like that. So I took Ken's place as a director. Okay. And the, okay. the role of editor became Jeff Smith's. Uh, I don't know how keen he was on the idea of becoming an editor, <laughs> but he's doing. I think he's doing. He's doing a pretty good job. You know, for a guy that's never had any formal experience. Sure. Um, Ken. Ken used to polish it a bit because he's a professional editor that's been through a lot of different publications over the years. Right. But um, I think he over polished it for us mug mechanics. You know, sometimes it's nice to be able to read something that feels like it's raw from the motor trade. Yep. You know, and Ken used to give it too much of a gloss sometimes. I felt whereas when you read stuff from Jeff, you know, the grammar might be out a bit, the punctuation might be a bit stuffed up, but who cares? The point gets across at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, really so, so yeah, that was that was how it all came about, yeah. and uh, oh, it was it seemed like a, a sensible sensible thing for us to join forces. You know, okay. they had this um, the repair solutions database, and I had this this scan data database with waveforms as well, and it just seemed sensible to get them together and make this one resource for everybody. But since then, it's grown a lot. I've introduced um, we didn't have technical videos. I've added the technical videos to it, um, which our members can upload. We've get, we don't get a lot, but we get a, a fairly in, good increase in, in technical videos. I think we've had two in the last week. So uh, is this interactive? So when you, uh, any member can any, upload a video? That's right, yeah. Yep. This video here, for example, you, you could just quickly, it's quite easy, I'll just show you as a member, you can just go to that page and share your videos. Okay. And you just enter a description, select the video, click upload, bang, it's up there. Right. Now we always, so it's not a porno or something like that, we yeah. always we always want to check it first. Yeah, Once we've checked it, we will then set it live. Yep. So, yeah, I don't think any of our members would do anything like that to us. It's um, if it's any, we, we do have size restrictions on the, restrictions on the website, so we've actually limited it to 250 meg. If anybody has one larger than that, we have the ability for them to upload it to your uh, YouTube channel which can be any size, and then we just link from the YouTube channel. So I suppose, as we know, Google, it's full of um, uh, information, good or bad. What does um, TAT do to ensure that the information that they're receiving is, is accurate? How do you...? So, so as I said earlier, we have our... Um, 
So we have our repair solutions. So that's somebody with a, a troublesome vehicle and then that's repaired. So that's all in house. So there's no way that can be corrupted. That data's, you know, that's, it was the, the, the members and the technical team. They were the only two people involved. So as far as, as, far as our database of, of known good repair solutions, that's not a problem. But we do have a TAC share section where you can share your solutions. So that means you may not have gone and got a technical assistance from this, but you might have just had a really great job in your workshop that you were really proud of, you know, that it was a curly one, yeah. and you want to share with the world. You can, you can add your, oh, that's not a touch screen. You can add your information there, you can select what type of vehicle it was, add files, add videos, all that sort of stuff, and that gets uploaded to our, our um, team. They verify that everything's right, publish it, set it up, and that also goes into our database of repairs. Okay. So that's one form. The other form is obviously the scan data and scope data that can be uploaded. Now that can get corrupted, you know, if people aren't making sure that the vehicle is correct. We, we have, like I said before, we have certain requirements for the data that's uploaded. We, we don't want to see fault codes, we don't want to see fuel trims out of whack, we don't want to see driver yeah, right. problems. Okay. Um, but some guys might not know that. We even like to see them, unless they stipulate that they want to add cold engine data. If they're ad adding engine data, we tip typically like them to add data off an engine that's reached operating temperature. But you know, there's times when you might want to see a, an engine warming up and going through its warm up cycle. Yep. But so, so as far as corruption goes, there's really, that's no. about the only source of yep. data coming into our website that could be out of whack. So, but we have, we have a few things in place. We have feedback forms and we also, on that scan data section, when you, oh, we've still got it open over here, haven't we? Um, oh, no, we haven't. So if I open up a, oh, go forward. If you have a look down the side over there, it looks a little, you yep. see, see all the orange yep. and, so I'm, I'm, I'm an admin, so normally you wouldn't see the little red box, see okay. the little red boxes? Yep. That's, that's only because I'm an admin and you can see that, but see how you got the little blue bell there? Yep. If, if you had a, a vehicle that you thought was on there that you thought had bad data, you can actually click that blue box and report it. It'll fill out, I think I can click it and show you. So there it is there, report a problem with the following submission. So it's already put all the information of the vehicle. All you've got to do is write, that data's wrong or something like that, and that's it. That'll come to me, I'll check it, confirm it, and if it is wrong, I'll then make a, did that go back, no. So I see the little orange exclamation mark? That's been reported as having a problem. So if I click on that exclamation mark, I'm not real good. No. So there we are there. So the engine was not at operating temperature when the scan data was recorded. So we try to do that sort of stuff just to keep people up to date with what's going on with the data. If it's really erroneous looking data, we just don't add it, we just remove it. But, uh, most of the time our customers are quite... Are I'm going to go one step ahead. Now, I did mention to you before, but Nigel was talking about how we're getting that close to, um, to data sharing and all that. Well, once we get over the line with data sharing, it's not going to be that easy. And we, w we are going to have access. But in my eyes, and, I've all, and we have spoken about this on the ARCA Council, we think we need a body where we as an independent workshop can go to a website and interact with that website. So if I have a Kia that comes in and I want to see technical service bulletins, I don't go to the Kia website. I take, for instance, I go to the TAT website and I extract the, the um, technical service bulletins from that. I extract any updates or anything like that. And obviously, uh, Rod, you can supply a link that takes you straight to Kia. But I could see this website, for instance, growing to data sharing, so we're not actually dealing with the manufacturer head they on. Need to be careful as far as what data you're sharing. Obviously, there's copyright laws that we need to keep yes. and be wary of. Yeah. Um, so, as but far a as lot of the time you could just provide a link a anyway. Link. Exactly. We couldn't house TSBs. Yep. If we stored TSBs, then we'd be we'd be subject to to copyright law law yep. infringement. But yep. what we have done is we've got here um, on our discussion forum page, we actually have. And the discussion forum is just general chit chat. We do share tips and tricks and we, we, we buy and sell stuff on there and we talk yep. about general stuff, but this is, this is more just a relaxed discussion area. 
and we do have a link uh, page there that's that's on on um, TSBs. Yep. Yep. Um, you'll see over there the last subject was TSBs on a Dropbox. So to cover my butt and the website in TAT, I didn't put the TSBs here. I put them on a, a Dropbox somewhere and I linked to that Dropbox. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's sort of it's interesting because um, there needs to be a third party involved, whether it was someone like Mark Boyce or someone like that. I'm not saying him, but there, there needs to be a, um, a third party involved, in my opinion, uh, because... The trouble is we're going to have dramas trying to find where to go to. That's right. And if I just type in Kia, Kia manufacturer or, you know what I mean, you're just going to have to search through so much to try and just get to what you want to get to. Yeah. So that that's but what my attitude would be there. I feel that that was, that was our driving force with the aftermarket, which is going to be changed shortly. We've, we've been told by mem members that aftermarket info resource is wrong. It should be OEM info resource. Yeah. So we'll be changing that title shortly. Yeah. But um, this is essentially what this does. Now I'm in the process of rebuilding this at the moment, this page, these pages. So at the moment we've got service and repair information, uh, module programming, uh, whether, you, whether or not this company, this make allows us to use J2534, the universal programming tool. Um, it shows you owner's manuals and the factory scan tool. Uh, and you'll even have reviews and things like that at the bottom. But what we're currently in the pro, or what I'm currently in the process of doing is I'm adding um, a lot of them now having electronic logbooks, where you you don't no longer a service booklet. Um, Range Rover. Yeah, and BMW. I had one the other day. And uh, Mercedes, and quite a few of them. Yeah. So um, now they're so stopping that, Nigel, aren't they? they I are. don't think the manufacturer can continue to do that unless they give us access. Because I tried to get access to it. Access issue. Access issue. Yeah. yeah. And so I said to this guy, like we service his Range Rover, and I said, but mate, I can't fill out your electronic logbook because they won't let me onto the website. Mm. And he was sort of a bit funny about that. Mm. And he said, well, why won't they? And I said, well, you'd have to ask them. Ring your member. Hey. Ring your local member. Mm. Um, yeah, so this one, for example, this is a BMW site. We'll be adding very soon, I'm going to have new sections on this page, um, and all of the pages for that matter. So if they do have electronic logbook servicing, it'll have instructions on how to access it and where to access it and, and so forth. Yep. Um, same will be with TSBs. We're adding TSBs as well as a couple of other things. Okay. So it'll keep expanding and growing as time goes on. But the idea is to make this that one stop stop location for, sure. for all your factory service portal information. That's the